Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another high-quality, professionally edited short film from world-renowned content creator Wooden Leg Woodworking, who, in his short film production career, has already amassed 21 YouTube subscribers, an astonishing feat that will probably not be repeated for the remainder of the 21st century. In this high-budget 1080p film, I am showcasing how I made a fancy segmented pen for one of my friends. Zig Ziglar said, success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. In this case, I had both opportunity and preparation. I had the opportunity, no one was keeping me from making this pen, but I'm not entirely sure how I would prepare to make this thing other than just starting to make it. I could have prepared my emotions, but as Elizabeth Gilbert said, your emotions are the slaves to your thoughts, and you are the slave to your emotions. Thus, because I was thinking about making this project, I suppose my emotions were present too. Quick update on what's going on in this video. I cut a bunch of squares on the table saw and now I'm gluing them into long sticks. I'm not sure why I would tell you what I'm doing when you can just watch what I'm doing in the video. That's why I'm going to supply you with an endless stream of quotes and various other thoughts. My workshop may look like a mess. There's bits of plywood all over the place, dust covering the floor and the tools, and a lawnmower behind me. But if you look the right way, you can see that the whole world is a garden. That's from Francis Hodgson Burnett. With that in mind, the whole world is nothing but a garden. So there are no shops. There's no anything except for just gardens, unless you live in New Jersey. But you know what lives both in New Jersey and in the rest of the world, in all the various gardens? Rats! And the largest rat in the world is a Gambian pouched rat. Gambian pouched rats can grow up to 9 pounds and be as long as 35 inches from its head to the tip of the tail. Here's another update as to what's going on in the video. I taped both the sticks together that I'd glued up previously, then cut a ridiculously straight line down the center of them. One of the worst things about questing the seas is the potential to get shipwrecked. You're sailing along smoothly one moment, and then the next moment you know you're at the bottom of the sea, visiting with Davy Jones and all the other delights of the bottom of the ocean. That is exactly what happened to me here in about two seconds. Enjoy. Man, oh man, I did something wrong. Look at that. Look at that. I was carrying it over to put it aside to let the glue dry and the whole thing fell apart. Yar. Ugh. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Turns out my problem was my shop was very cold and the glue didn't properly cure. That may or may not have been the real issue, but that's what I'm gonna blame it on. And so the only thing left to do was to throw the pieces that I had messed up in the fire and let them burn! With a cry of, I am free! I traced my steps back to where I was before and began gluing up sticks once again. Initially there was a bit of frustration for my foolish maneuvers that had resulted in a tragic defeat in battle. But then I remembered why I do woodworking. It's because I enjoy making things. So I was just given another opportunity to continue making things. Taking the tape off these pieces took a comically large amount of time. This is sped up like 15 times and it still takes a long time in the video. I then squared up the sticks as you've seen me done once before already. Hopefully this time these ones don't have to get THROWN INTO THE FIRE! How amusing that my previous failure was the fuel for the fire to heat my workshop so that this time the glue would dry properly. I guess that's why sometimes it's good to let things BURN! Even though I do sometimes burn things in order to heat my shop, what I usually do is I take more of like a statistical or analytical approach and then I, I give it back in, in a bit of a hierarchical manner. And what that allows me to do is then I can look at a board or a log and not only do I see the potential exponential and credential value in it, but I also can think like, well, what if this was feathers? And then if we take the feathers and just put them on various birds, what we end up with is a bunch of random fellows wearing hoodies and cargo shorts and t-shirts under the hoodies. And they all just look, you know, well put together and all things. And then they throw clamps all around. 
But what you can do is you can take like the lobster population or something like that. And the only thing left to do is just bring it to the youth. Rarely do I try to attract attention to my face, but check out my focused and composed using the table saw without glasses face. Very attractive. Finally, I could move forward with the project because this time it didn't fall apart in my very hands. All three of my hands, that is. One great thing about buying cheap tools is they're very small. I had to drill half the hole, then adjust things, and then drill the rest of the way through. That lawnmower follows me around in every shot like some sort of convoluted magnet. Here I'm mixing up some 15 minute epoxy to glue the pen tube into the piece of wood. Finally, after traveling far to the south where the cactus grow, sailing far across the ocean blue and going through fire and flames, it was time to mount this bit of wood on the lathe and hope that several hours of work did not explode. One of the many advantages of not taking care of or maintaining your tools is sometimes they break and do other weird things. Take my lathe, for example. Just this week, it decided that rather than being a variable speed lathe, varying from 1000 RPM to 4000 RPM, it would be a single speed lathe resting at a speed of nearly 6000 RPM. It's fair to point out that turning any bit of wood at such a high speed is quite dangerous, but it would be even more dangerous if the item I was turning was larger than just a pen. This is because if the RPM is maintained, but the diameter of travel increases, the speed increases exponentially. This is because the outside edge goes around the same amount of times per minute but the distance traveled per round is increased a great deal. Thus, the speed of the workpiece would be nearly unimaginable and could probably kill you if it hits you. Also, this high speed kept throwing my sandpaper all over the place. Enjoy this clip of me starting and stopping the lathe a bunch of times and doing various sanding techniques. One thing you're missing because I'm talking this whole time is the various shouts of exuberance I give throughout the entire project. Here is a little bit of that. There's also plenty of singing that usually goes on, but I usually mute that so that you may not enjoy such a lovely concert. I applaud the attention span of anyone who is still watching this video, and if you thought the commentary was a little bit chaotic and confusing, might I point out that it could have been far worse? Allow me to showcase. The person I made this pen for is actually Warning is a dangerous is very dangerous. Be careful if you are lighting fires sharp objects inside as you may cut off your fingers as structures. Well. Yeah, see? I could have done a triple voiceover the whole time. How good would that have been? And I guess we'll never know what I was saying about the person I'm making this pen for. It could have been spewed from various fountains. But I will bring it to the youth. Thanks for watching and have a delightful day. Kudos to you for watching to the end.